adding anything. Um, there we go. We've got Marco. Hello, Marco. You're at home in Portugal, Lisbon. That's great. Okay, you're the first. And Gail is on Long Island at home. If you're at home, what room are you in? Are you in the bedroom? Are you in the kitchen? Are you in the living room? You know, as someone said, um, we're all here, but you can see me. I can't see you. So whatever information you can give me and the others, that would be great. So we've got living room. Well, you can see where I am. You can see a lot more about me than I can see about you. So uh, that's something to think about. And I've added a poll. Uh, let's see what the poll so far. We've got no. Uh, only one person has actually uh, created a web quest. So could you raise your hand? Who has actually created a web quest? Or just add a smiley. We've got Bonnie in the living room. GA, is that Georgia? <laughs> I'm Canadian, so I'm afraid. I mean, I did take uh, American history and geography, but still GA. I'm not quite sure about the uh, short forms. Oh, it's Georgetown. So GA is Georgetown? Oh, it's, it is Georgia. Okay, so I'm getting good. Uh, and Len is at home in Georgetown, Ghana, in one of the two bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is next to you. That's great. So if you get the uh, the webcam, maybe you can hold up your son and we can see him. All right. From what I understand, was like he was now great uh, with the bandwidth. As you can see, uh, there are some uh, improvements. And I'm really excited about that. All right. So if you're enthusiastic, raise your hand. Okay, give me a smiley, uh, thumbs up. The smiley's at the bottom, right hand, claps, uh, devil face, whatever you want it to be. Hello, Jenny. All right, so enthusiasm is great, I think. All right, I just created this, um, here it is, that I'd like to share with you a YouTube video. So just let me know if you can hear it. I love this saying because it really keeps me going. In other words, when I'm enthused about anything, I feel good. And hopefully others feel good as well. That's what I hope, at least. This session is about web quests, and web quests are a great way for us to share learning with our students and show them that Schoolwork is not only about content, and it's not only about passing exams, but that school can be about your passion for learning. And that's what I have been trying to do for the past 30 plus years, and that is to get students, my students, to realize that learning is just one of the best things they'll ever have in life because learning is about life whether it's done in school whether it's done after school whenever it happens and it does happen while we're awake at least and probably while we're asleep but at least we know about it and we sense it because there is passion behind learning and that's what it should be. It should be something that we do because we want to do it. We want to learn. We want to know. We're curious. And not because we have to take exams. Definitely not about exams. What I've tried to do is teach my students to learn through teaching. And one of the ways that I found that actually puts everything in place is using technology with the web quest and that's what this live class is about it's about using web quests to get our students enthusiastic about learning 
So first of all, we'll be discussing what a web quest is, where to find it, how to use it, how to create it, and how to flip our classes using the web quest. So what is a web quest? Well, stay tuned and find out. Bye for now. Okay, that was a promo. I hope you're able to uh, get that. Uh, that's something if we're talking about the flip classroom, which was uh, the last session that we had last week, then that could be something that you would uh, share with your students just to get them thinking about web quest. You might then have them ask some questions, have each other ask questions, and so on. The idea, of course, is that they are familiar with what's going to appear. As you can see, I just uh, uh, created a video of this session. It's exactly the same. I just uh, used uh, Screencast-O-Matic to create it. All right, so what is a web quest? If you could just write something. In the chat box, a lot of people have some misconceptions, but that's good. I was just talking to a colleague today about uh, the school of mistakes <laughs> and the idea that we learn more from mistakes, at least uh, it's learning that is sustained forever probably. Our mistakes are a great way for us to learn. So, you know, whatever you answer is fine as long as you try and say something. So what is a web quest? And I see Marco, you've got your hand up. Marco, if you've got a problem with your connection, let me know in the chat and um, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Maria says it's sort of off a quiz online. <laughs> okay. So like a web quiz. If you don't know Jenny, uh, that's good. If you could maybe guess. Not a clue. All right. So that's good. Frozen. Yes, we are, Len. Mr. Gates is frozen. Oh, really? You might want to refresh your page, Len. That might help. A virtual scavenger hunt. Yeah, a lot of people confuse web quest with a scavenger hunt, but a scavenger hunt is really that. You can have a, a scavenger hunt online, but it's not the same. No. All right. So what is a web quest? A little bit about little history. And here it is. It's an inquiry-oriented lesson format. It's actually a lesson, which brings me to my next question. How many of you are teachers? Not that you have to be a teacher to create a web quest. You can use a web quest as a student. You can also use it as a teacher or as a mother. If you're homeschooling your children, you might want to create one or use one. Okay, so I see we've got mostly um, instructors, college, adult learners. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. So actually, it's a lesson format, and it's a way to gather information in a meaningful, authentic way. And all the information is on the web. This started uh, basically as a K-12 for younger students, but Nowadays, it might be even more applicable to adults who like to multitask in the classroom. So it's a way for teachers to control where their students are going on the Internet. So here students are multitasking, going everywhere. You might want to narrow things down and have them only go where you want them to go, or at least to be goal-oriented. Uh, the web quest is divided into seven parts. That means that teachers need to either create or be aware of these sections or parts. And you may find the parts of interest because they do look like a lesson plan. Only these are for students. Only number seven is actually for the teacher. 
or other teachers who may want to um, use the web quest. So what is a web quest? A web quest is a way to engage students in teamwork. The students can work individually or in teams. It's a lot better if they work in teams. Each student has a task or a role that they play in the project. So I've said inquiry-based, I've said project-based, authentic-based, relationship-based, socially-based. These are all parts of the web quest. So first of all, there's the introduction, where you introduce the topic and give an overall picture of what the goal of the assignment is. And then you give tasks to each one of the members. And I'll, I'll give you examples in a second. And then you tell the students how they will do this. You give them the steps that they will take. And then you provide them with the resources. They may also bring their own resources, but at least you give them some resources so that they don't waste their time looking for uh, websites and information on the internet because you want them to be focused on the tasks. Okay, this is very much teacher controlled where the teachers have a goal for their students and they want to control what's going on. Next is an evaluation. The students know ahead of time how they're going to be evaluated and how they're going to be graded if there's a grade or if there are other means of uh, maybe certification at the end. This is all in advance. Yes, uh, so Maureen, the task could be according to their ability. Yes. You can divide the tasks and the roles. You might have a role for the weaker student. You might have a role for the stronger student, different interests. Um, you can decide on the role, and the students can decide which role they would like to take. But you can provide as a teacher with different roles since you know your students. So there's room for everyone. And then there's the conclusion. Okay, this is also similar to a report. Okay, so at the end, they come to some conclusion and you help them with the conclusion, of course. And then there's a teacher page if you want to share this, as I said before. Now, these are all clickable. And I think you'll be able to, if you haven't already, how many of you were able to uh, get the PowerPoint presentation that I added to the class? If not, I'll share it with you. I'll share the link with you so you can get it later on. All the images are clickable. They're all active, so you'll be able to um, go through each one. Here is the link. I'll add it to the chat box. There it is. You got it. Great. All right, so there it is. Okay, that's the link. See, on the WizIQ whiteboard, it's not clickable right now. But the good news is it's clickable in the recordings. So when you view the recordings of this session, you'll be able to click on each of these and get uh, an example of what they look like. And they're all taken from the Perfect Society. The Perfect Society is a web quest that I created in I think 2005, for my students, it was literature based on a book, on The Giver. How many of you are familiar with The Giver? It's a great book, not only for young students, but also for t adults. All right, you might want to read it, The Giver. So I, I created a web quest based on The Giver. I did a few web quests on um, literature, on books and short stories. So you'll get a chance to see it. 
All right, so let's take a look at each of the parts, okay? The introduction. Notice what it says. Each one of these either has a purpose or it focuses on. So the introduction, if you could write in the chat, just summarize, what does the introduction give you? Just write a few words, keywords. What is the introduction? Yes, very good, George. That's right. Excellent. I love when people give different answers because it just, they're all correct. It's just another way of looking at it. Excellent. Excellent, Julie. That's right, Jennifer. Perfect. That's right. Anyone else? Yes, Bonnie. That's right. Okay, that's the introduction. Next is the task. Now, the task is pretty tricky. This is where you have a chance to be creative. I love this part because as teachers, we look for enthusiasm. And um, to tell you the truth, I got enthusiastic about teaching once again after about 20 years because of the web quest. It really does bring uh, enthusiasm to teachers. All right, so could you describe the task? What is the task about? Okay, there's a pretty general statement there. I wonder if you can break it up and relate it to what you do as a teacher. See, it's not the goal anymore. That, that's basically the introduction. Yes, exactly, Jennifer. That's right. It's more of, yes, it's connected to the introduction, definitely. But it's more of the example. And it is a kind of assignments. The tasks are for each one of the team members. So you break it down into tasks. What will each learner do? Okay, what will they do in order to get to the end result? Now, for example, it could be uh, a few things. It could be, uh, how do I get to, uh, let's say, uh, the theater for my house, let's say. Okay, the task is, what is the fastest way to get from X to Z? Okay, and you provide the route, for example. That's one task. Another task could be, um, what would you buy on the way if you're going to the movies? Okay, the theater, whatever. What would you buy on the way? And how much time would you spend? I'm just kidding. I'm, but it's how to get to your goal, whatever that goal happens to be. Okay, so you have to come up with really interesting things. I'll show you what I did just to give you an idea. And then the process. The process is the fun part because it really forces teachers to um, organize. See, the web quest really forces us to be organized in ways that may be you know, a lesson plan doesn't do it for us because a lesson plan is, you know, something very, very general and, and it's hard to sometimes follow your own lesson plan. But with a web quest, it really forces you to get the job done and get students going. Yes, Maria, it's the how. It explains how they will accomplish the task. What will they have to do? in order to get from A to B. Will they walk? Will they talk? Will they uh, interview people? Will they create a movie? What will they do? And here the scaffolding comes in and it includes clear steps, the resources they will be using. And I see that the resources uh, is not here. Some have the resources as a separate part and not in the process. So you might want to have the resources on its own, 
the resources are actually the uh, websites and areas that the students will be visiting. Let me just... Uh, so the resources, I keep them separate. I have a process and I also have a step called resources. Okay, next, of course, is the evaluation, which is really important because we want our students to focus on how they'll be graded, evaluated. Exactly, very good, George. That's for the tasks and also the process because you might have a different process for each task, for each role. And there's a lot of role playing, yes. The idea, and you know what, it's not only teachers that can come up with the different roles. You can get your students to also collaborate and decide what roles would get them to uh, the end of the final goal. And yes, Julie, it's a rubric. And the idea of rubrics was very popular, um, I guess, over 10 years ago. And uh, this will bring you back to the rubric. Yes, it's done in rubrics. And they're also fun, but you can get them online these days. Everything is online. And I'll explain how easy it is to create a web quest and the rubrics. But it really, you can get your students to also collaborate and create their rubrics and then have them peer review one another. So yes. And then of course, there's the conclusion. Now, what do you think will happen in the conclusion? Apparently. Oh, that's great, Len. Len, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you're doing that. Rubrics are really, I love rubrics. Um, so I've been using them, I guess, since 2001, I think. I've been using them quite a few years, and I really like them. I appreciate them. I also uh, appreciated when my instructors used them when I was doing my PhD because it really I like I'm very competitive so I like to get I like to get 95 and up. So uh, it's hard to get a good grade unless you know exactly what the instructor wants you. So if you get, you know, numbers beside each uh, performance task it really helps to get that grade. Otherwise, you don't know why you got a low grade or a high grade. So it really forces um, instructors, teachers, whatever, to cater to students uh, who are competitive, or at least to students who want to know how to improve next time around. What about conclusion? Feedback. Feedback comes later. You can also add feedback. I'll show you that, Marco. But conclusion is actually putting everything together. It's uh, going back to the introduction and then closing it off. Reflection could be the next part. So when you talk about feedback, you might want to have um, recommendations in the conclusion and, and leave the reflection and feedback for another section. It's modular, so you can actually add sections if you feel that that's necessary. But these are the classical and I didn't tell you where I guess I must have um, jumped it here um, I'm going back but I think I I must have had it here uh, a little bit about who created the first web quest so maybe I can ask you who are the two people who came up with the idea for a web quest Anybody know? You might want to go on the internet and find out, but if not, here it is. All right. So the web quest was developed by Bernie Dodge. Um, and I used to be known as the lady, the web quest lady, because I had so many web quests on one of my uh, websites. Actually, I created my first website to include all kinds of web quests. And I had the most. But what happens with online web quests is that people change their minds about the domains 
and they disappear and the web quest disappears. So they become broken links. So a lot of my, a lot of my, the list of my web quests became broken links. Okay, if you're interested, this is the website. It's nellymuller.com. So you'll find a lot of web quests that are broken links. Bernie Dodge started the idea in 1995. That's a long time ago. And um, he worked on it together with a fellow student. Tom March was doing his uh, MA at the time. Yes, go ahead, Lynn. Feel free to ask questions. And if I don't notice, just ping me. Uh, and Tom March. Okay, if you're interested in taking a um, course on WebQuest, I have a course on WizIQ called Integrating Technology into the Classroom through WebQuest. It costs $10 and you can stay there for as long as you want. If you go into the webquest.org, it'll cost you $20 and you can stay for a few months. Oh no, I think you can stay for two years now. It used to be free, webquest.org. This was created by Bernie Dodge. And as you notice, uh, the colors for the webquest, this was also uh, developed by Bernie, so it's his. Yeah, they don't have to be Len. They don't have to be traditional classrooms, as you know. None of my classes are traditional, whether they're face to face or online. I do everything I can to break the walls, even in a face to face class. I get my students to stand up, to move around, to go outside, to do anything, just not to uh, feel like they're enclosed in a classroom. So, what do you mean? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mondrian, that's right, that's the uh, the color scheme. Uh, when the emerged, did they have roots in traditional? Bernie was never traditional, so uh, maybe a little bit, maybe. All right, here's another area. It's called Concept to Classroom. And of course, these are clickable, so you'll be able to click on the images when you view the recordings or through the presentation that I shared with you. And Concept to Classroom is an old website, but it has a lot of incredible things. Um, see if I can get it for you here. It's um, a great way to uh, learn about WebQuest and try things out. I'm trying to give you the best of the best because <laughs> there are some um, things on the internet that are not that great. So you want to um, not have to try things out and learn that they're not really uh, that great. Okay, so um, you'll be able to click on this. I'll share another my website here it is uh, with a web quest that if you're in case you're interested okay so this is a great uh, place to learn more about web quests all right so where do we find web quests well I've just added a link where you will find uh, a list of web quests. Notice that many of them are broken. So if you look for a web quest by a topic, let's say, for example, I want a web quest on um, trees, okay? Trees web quest. So I just write trees web quest, and then I may find a web quest that's completely, the link is broken because uh, people stopped using the domain and so the web quest is now broken, which is why I think you should create your own web quests. But there are places where you can find them. And let me screen share some of these uh, places where you can find web quests. 
So are you ready for some screen sharing? Just let me know in the chat box if you're ready. That's great, Anita. That's wonderful to learn. Oh, I can't believe it. I tried this before. Let's see if it's going to work now. Isn't that amazing? I tried this before and it seemed to work and now it doesn't seem to. All right, looks like I'm not going to be able to screen share even though I tried this. Didn't I just say that? Let me try it again. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you, let's see if I can make this. I just refresh the page, which means that uh, maybe it'll work. Okay, I'm trying to screen share again. Uh, is it very slow? It should be. Let's see, let me take off the poll. I see the results are still the same. And let me try to screen share again and let's see what happens. No, it's not going to work. Okay, looks like. Um, it's not going to work. Okay, so let me just uh, share the uh, some of the places where you can find WebQuest. Um, well, I shared my um, my website. Okay, let me share another one. Even though you can get, if you have any experiences with large glasses, how do I use WebQuest for a class of? Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. That would be absolutely fantastic. Len, 400 students. Just invite me and I'll help you do that. You can, are you using Moodle? That would be awesome. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, 400. Yes. That would work so well. Yes, just invite me. We'll figure something out. I'd love to be part of that. You need to get a few instructors uh, to do that, but it would work. You can divide them up using um, uh, even Moodle with a grouping. I've had a teacher use uh, WebQuest with 200 students. Another uh, area where you can um, get WebQuest is, um, here is the link that I wanted to share with you before. Here it is. Okay, these are some of the places where you can get WebQuest. Here's another one. There we go. Okay, so we've got Zunal 13, my website, and Bernie Dodge's uh, website where you can find WebQuest. Some of them are good, some of them are not. So, um, and some may be broken. Okay, this is one place, Quest Garden. It used to be completely free. It was free in 1995, but then uh, everybody needs to make a living whether it's online or face-to-face. -face. So uh, Bernie decided that, you know, domains, websites, everything costs money. So now it costs $20 for a 20-year subscription, but you can have a 30-day free. So you can take a look and see some of the web quests that are there. You'll find my web quest there as well. And it's very helpful. There's also Zunal which I like even better. Actually, I prefer Zunal. Zunal came a bit later after um, the Quest Garden. And I find that uh, Zunal is a lot better. So if you're interested in learning about web quests and how to create them, you can do this on your own, or you can join me in the course that I mentioned before. 
uh, if you're interested. In addition, you can also find some web quests that my students had created on WizIQ. Okay, here are some web quests that were created on WizIQ. In addition, you can also create web quests through WebQuest Direct. You'll also find some of my web quests there too. Um, WebQuest Direct is also a great place for um, web quests. You can also find them under my YouTube video. I have a playlist for the web quest. Now you can also copy the chat at the end, so there's no need to copy anything. Okay, at the end you can copy the chat and then um, paste it anywhere. But then if you listen to the recordings, you'll be able to get the links because everything is clickable. Are there any questions so far? Is this the last one to create? Is this the last one? What, what does that mean? Yes, to create, but also to view, not only to create. Okay, you can view them and create in the same places. Okay, so um, they're actually the same. Well, how do we use web quests? Okay, Len mentioned 400 students. It's a way to get students to do less assignments because they're working in teams. So you might have uh, teams of 10 divide 10, then you have uh, 10 divided by 400, which makes it less, but it's still a lot. And then you can subdivide that. But it, uh, it means that you have less work to um, evaluate. Well, teams of 40, <laughs> 40 teams. Yes, 40 team means 40, uh, 40 projects to check. It's not as bad as 400, right? So uh, it's breaking it down. Think about that. Okay, less to mark. But if you're peer reviewing, well, peer reviewing could be more work actually. But uh, so how do we use them? Well, this is an example of, <laughs> is this your classroom? Um, raise your hand if this is your classroom. Is this you standing on the podium? Are these your students? Now, in this classroom, as you can see, the students have their bring your own device, okay, in front of them. But in most classes, our students are texting, okay, and they have their cell phones uh, somewhere where you don't see them on their chairs or somewhere, and they're multitasking. Uh, one of the best ways to get them to, <laughs> George says yes, one of the best ways to get them to focus on what you're doing is through a web quest. They all have their roles and they can be working together on Google Drive. By the way, Google Drive is a great way. They don't have to be sitting next to one another. You could have the whole class collaborating on a web quest, asking questions, um, after they've done some work at home. So it could be uh, fit, fitted into the flipped classroom. But it's a great way to get everyone on the same page. And that's what we want. <laughs> As teachers, we want to feel like we've got everybody together. And Len, I don't know how many students there are in this classroom, but there could very well be 100, maybe 200. What would you guess? What is your guess? How many are in this particular conference hall or study hall? 150. All right, Maria says, we don't see them all. There are more of them. Okay, so there could be a lot of students, okay? But it's a chance to, as I said, get everyone working together and that's what it's all about and it could be so much fun because they like to work together now there are two uh, there's the web quest direct here these are all clickable the top the center and the web quest place is the place where you can learn more about the web quest and how you can use it in the classroom and i'd like to share 
how this person has used the web quest in his flipped class. But before we get there, how do we create web quests? How do you go about doing it? What do you need? Yes, of course. They can be working on this at home, and that's where the flipped classroom comes in. They do this at home, and then they come into class and they collaborate, ask questions. Or um, they can do it in class, or they can do it on their summer vacation, vacations, anytime. Web quests are project based, authentic learning, which means that the roles are real to life. You're asking them to play the roles of real people and you're giving them real problems. Or at least they have to function as real people. And this is great for English language learners from any, any content area, mathematics, art, business, Okay, so how do you create it? Well, first of all, you need to have a place, a place to create it. Okay, now you can watch me on YouTube. I've got a lot of uh, ideas how to create it. There's the Quest Garden, there's Zunal. So you go straight into Zunal and you follow. You don't have to pay anything. On Quest Garden, you have to pay. So if you don't want to pay, you go to Zunal and you create it. How many of you, by the way, have websites of your own or blogs? Because you can create it on a blog and it's completely free. You don't need a domain of your own. But if you have a website, you can create it on your website. But you can create it on a blog. How many of you have blogs? Free blogs like... Uh, through Google or through WordPress or through uh, Live, whatever they call it, WordPress, great. So you can create your web quest on a blog, Blogspot, yes, that's Google. And you can also use Google, this is what many of my students do, uh, the teachers that I train, Google Sites. Google Sites are completely free and you can create all you need to know is the six or seven sections that you want to use and we can practice this together now how do we use webquest for the flipped classroom okay i'd like to share i wish i could share i don't know why i'm not able to share i tried this before and it worked so well on firefox um, but then it stopped. So let's see, maybe I can. Okay, uh, let me share the links with you. This is the person. His name is Ken. Okay, here we go. And um, he created a web quest and combined it with his flipped classroom. Now, when you think of flipped classroom, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with the flipped classroom, but actually it's preparing students to do their homework in a meaningful way. And web quests are very meaningful. So it's, it, it makes sense to use the web quest for the flipped classroom. Okay, so there's the link, and here's more about Okay, here he is. He created a web quest, and he, this is the video that he shared with his students. And the topic is very boring in my opinion, but, you know, the topic is an overview of the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, I don't know if you're American. I'm Canadian, so I can say this, <laughs> but... Uh, the Supreme Court, okay? How do you make something like this interesting? Well, you can through the web quest. You can make anything interesting for students by creating tasks. 
and providing them with roles that they have to follow. So they, it's like an acting role. Um, so they may have to, uh, you're Brazilian, okay. So I'm sure the Supreme Court is not something that you would jump to with enthusiasm. But don't forget the idea is to get our students enthusiastic. Okay, that's what we want to do. So I'm going to share the video with you. Okay, we're going to watch the video so you get an idea. And I hope I have the right one. Let me see if this is the one. I shouldn't say the first. Oh. The most recent Supreme Court. Can you hear it? which is in the basement of the U.S. Congress, and it was a lot darker on the walls back then because they had candles that were lighting the room, and so the smoke would just tarnish the, the room. They actually had a trial in there, if you've ever seen the movie, movie Amistad. It took place in that room, and it looked much less ornate, of course, than this place, the U.S. Supreme Court today, which is not far from where you're watching this little video that you're loving right now. And if you go to the back of the front of that, you can see it is the great room where they actually do the trials, uh, not the trials, the hearings. And you can see, of course, we got the Greek Corinthian columns that you learned about back in World History One. Today we're going to look at just a couple slides. We're going to look at the, start with the Marshall Court. John Marshall is the Supreme Court Chief Justice from 1801 to 1835. Interestingly enough, he actually did not go to law school. There's nothing in the Constitution about having gone to law school. You only need to be appointed by the President and confirmed by the Senate, which he was. He's the longest serving justice. Well, I'm not going to bore you with it. As Helena says, his voice is not very enthusiastic. I totally agree. And I think it's really, really important for uh, presenters and for teachers to show enthusiasm. I'm sure he is enthusiastic, but it doesn't come through. And, and we need that. Okay, I mentioned at the beginning, we need to feel uh, teachers' enthusiasm. And if a teacher is beaming with enthusiasm, there's a chance that the students will catch on. Okay, so yes, that is a fault. I'd like to see, I think there's another video, let's see. Um, well, clearly the... That's not the one, uh, maybe it's this one. Let's see. Yes. Uh, Welcome that's back the one. to another episode in the series called WebQuest 101. In this part of the series, we'll look at how to make a really good process for your web quest. Okay, this is the first one. There are a series of three uh, YouTube videos that talk about web quest. There's, it's called Web Quest 101. myself wondering what did happen to the last 10 I ran away with my life fast forward never turn back again it's kind of funny that the more we pass time the more we need to set the rewind and 19 was the year I had to leave you but now I'm seeing all the signs is this really happening I can't believe it's true I'm just as surprised as you
one and all this don't forget is right there okay uh, when you view the recordings and I highly recommend that you view the recordings again it's not enough to watch a recording once you need to watch it a few times maybe and you'll be able to click on the whiteboard and get everything I want to share the next one with you okay the next one is part two Hi, and welcome back to the second part of this series on building WebQuests called WebQuest 101. If you viewed the last video, you'll remember that you spent some time looking at WebQuests that were already built to see how they're put together and what makes them a WebQuest. That was on webquest.org, and there's a free searching tool there if you're ever looking for more. What you should have noticed as you were looking through the WebQuests is that WebQuests are pretty hot. Yeah, they require higher order thinking skills on the part of the students and actually on your part as you go about designing the web quest. How do you go about designing a web quest then? What's the best first step? I recommend starting with the task. Figure out what you're going to have students do. Will they make a book? Will they create a museum exhibit? Will they hold a debate? Or maybe they'll just perform some complex analysis to make a decision. Not sure what you want your own students to do? That's okay. Spend some time on the WebQuest site looking at these design patterns to figure out exactly what task you want your own students to do. Once you've determined the task, it'll be much easier to figure out what content area and grade level you want your WebQuest to be made for. Once you finish that, you're ready to go to Quest Garden the place where great web quests grow. You'll register for a 30-day free trial. All right, I think I've told you about all that, so I don't need to repeat it. But in any case, you get an idea of the enthusiasm behind the web quest from uh, those videos, if not from this one. Okay, but a little more about Ken's Supreme Court web quest. It's also available. I've shared the link and you might want to look into that. And then let's take a look at what it's all about. What makes an effective teacher? What will make you an effective teacher? And the answer, of course, is using the web quest. Okay, that's one way of becoming an effective teacher. Now, Bill Gates spent a lot of time thinking about this, and he put a lot of money into this because apparently it's a hot topic these days. Everyone wants to know how to make a teacher effective. And I'm sharing the results of... Uh, the Bill Gates Foundation for MET. MET stands for Makes an Effective Teacher. M for Making, E for Effective, and Teacher. Would you believe that? We are so important to Bill Gates that he wants to figure out what makes us effective. Yes, I do have on the giver, and I'll be happy to share it with you, Maria. By the way, I use the giver web quest, the perfect society, with my English as a foreign language student. But it's good for any students, whether foreign language or not. And I'd like to share um, Bill Gates with you and his ideas on the web quest and how to make effective teachers. So let me just share another link with you. We've got a few more minutes, I see. Let me extend that. Time is going faster than I imagined. Here's another link. And here is a 1.58 uh, second video by Bill Gates. And I think it's this one. The for this all to be successful, uh, a lot of teachers, maybe not all of them, but certainly a majority, will have to feel good about these systems. And yet you can't design the systems without uh, getting in and really working together. And 
that's where the Memphis Project, it's one of four that uh, we put uh, money behind. It involved the teachers from the very beginning, and the union was there just uh, like in, in these reform designs here in Tennessee at the state level, and we met with them yesterday. And they, when you get a good measure that the overhead is reasonable and the quality of it's good, uh, then we're, we'll be in a fantastic position. And we do think the test scores are part of that. This video analysis uh, that's going on where you have a fairly inexpensive camera in the classroom and you can take some minutes and have people look at that. We think that'll be part of it. We're trying out um, student surveys, peer surveys, and what the principal thinks. And I think the final system will have um, many of those components in it. Um, but it, it is fair to say that if it was, if we have what today was absolutely imposed in a high stakes way, it might get rejected. And that's why it's a process that we're going through. Um, you know, some Colorado uh, probably as a state is the furthest along in saying the evaluation system is what drives their personnel system. But I, our goal is that we get a system that is used and accepted countrywide. That may take uh, a whole decade to, to get there. Okay, that's Bill Gates. Uh, and his uh, passion for education and how to get teachers effectively teaching. And I think it's all about the web quest. So here's the link to uh, the perfect society uh, based on the giver. And um, Bill Gates, for your information, spent $45 million to find out what makes a school teacher effective. All he had to do was ask me, and I would have told him. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding, but look how much money <laughs> goes into this. You know, why don't they just ask us what we do in class and then find out that we're all very effective teachers and that you don't have to spend that kind of money to learn. Well, for me, WebQuest brought the joy of learning to my students. And uh, you'll be able to look at this. It's also available. And remember what Martin Heidegger said, teaching is difficult because it means that we have to let our students learn. And letting our students learn means giving them opportunities to do what we do, and that is teach. Allowing our students to teach and learn through the web quest and engage them in what they want to do and that is have the freedom to learn on their own with enthusiasm as uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson said nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm so I hope you're enthusiastic about the web quest and you start for those of you that are interested, join me um, and uh, let me help you create your web quest or web quests because that's one of my passions, helping educators build a web quest as a way to get their students enthusiastic about learning. So there it is. That's the link. Uh, you can join that and I suggest you uh, copy the chat. There's copy chat and listen to the recording when it comes out so that you can click on each of the images and get the active links that are behind them. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I wanted to have some time for questions but our time is up. So thank you uh, for joining the session and I'm looking forward to our next session next week so we can become partners of learning. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the Sunday and a wonderful week. Bye for now.